of Busby's house, word has spread, trading ships from the United States, Great Britain, France, Australia, South America and other nations are anchored offshore, and settlers and locals keep arriving, keen to learn more of the treaty. Oi, you lot! Not over there! Okay. Come on, move it on! Move it on! Loaves and blooming fishes. That's what they want of me. I've had men scouring the countryside for pigs and potatoes. Well, I cannot perform miracles, and the price of everything's gone up with the demand. Feed the natives, they said. Wait, for how long? How many mouths for how many days? It's a complete and utter debacle. You'd think they were a royalty. She's a whore from New South Wales. He's the bastard son of a Manchester miller. <laughs> They'll do well, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, they're saying, if this treaty is signed, we'll have to prove our land was bought fair and square. Aye, but who's to judge? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, and what's to stop your native crying foul and selling the same land over again? Some of the natives are worried the French are coming. They do have a ship in the harbour. But surely you don't believe they would have any intentions on New Zealand? Well, it might be in the best interests of the natives to let them think so. Here we go. <coughs> Morning, gentlemen. Thank you. <coughs> what an extraordinary hat. I have avoided taking a position on this treaty. Even though the great chief railer came to me seeking advice, I told him these things were political matters. My concern was only to feed the souls of men with the word of God. And uh, direct them to the Catholic faith, naturally. Jean-Baptiste Francois Pompelier, first Roman Catholic bishop of New Zealand, known to the natives as Picopo. And yet the heresy, the English missionaries, they make every attempt to undermine our cause. They heap scorn upon the Mother Church, and still, and still we continue to make many, many converts. God is good. We should go inside. It might appear unseemly. We are not the he says that he, Pompelio, is the only companion for the governor. For the sake of our position among the natives, I think perhaps we should go and come. Make way! Make way for the lieutenant governor! Make way! Gentlemen, let's take our places immediately behind the governor. This will never do. I will never follow Rome. To the side.
Quiet, quiet, please. Order, order. Her Majesty Victoria, Queen of Great Britain and Ireland. Queen Victoria, to Queen of England and Ireland. Wishing to do good to the chiefs and people of New Zealand. And for the welfare of her subjects living among you, has, has sent me here to this place as governor. But, as the law of England gives no civil powers to Her Majesty out of her dominions, her efforts to do you good will be futile unless you consent. The people of Great Britain are, thank God, free. Tell that to the Irish. <laughs> Silence, Your Excellency. Settle down, Paddy. Free. And as long as they do not transgress the laws, they may go where they please. You have sold them land here and encouraged them to come here. Her Majesty, always ready to protect her subjects, is also always ready to restrain them. I will now read the treaty. OK, some edited highlights. There's a preamble where the Queen explains that since British subjects have settled here, it's her responsibility to get them to behave themselves. But to do that, she needs the rule of law that can only come from setting up a civil government. But that government needs to apply to the native population and her subjects, so they have to sign this treaty. With me so far? Good. So, we go on to Article 1. Ah, yes, a bit contentious. In the English version, Her Majesty's asking all the chiefs to cede all the rights and powers of sovereignty. The chiefs are never going to agree to this. The Reverend William said as much. And after some thought, I translated it to Kawanatab, government or governorship, which was about as close as I could get and not provoke a walkout by the chiefs. Kawanatab? Who will hurt you now? Okay, the second clause. The chiefs are still chiefs over their lands and treasures. Taonga. Oh, the Finua Tata Iwi. A Tata Taonga, the Reo, Gawahi Tapu. Of course, it'll be their land under the governorship of the British Crown. Article the third, where the Queen graciously bestows on the native New Zealander the same rights and duties of citizenship as the people of England. Tikanga. A tika hatawiwi hatena. Yeah. Or a tika mihingade. And imparts on them all the rights and privileges of British subjects. His Excellency now invites you to speak on the subject of the treaty as okay. just now. Karanga te rangatira, te kawana, maranga mai kweke te korero mo te takeara te manai waitangi kua tu whenane.
Que era uma... Que era uma coisa de Kawana. Elf to the old governor. Oi, ataku ki a koe. This is mine to thee. Kare a hau e hakae ana, kare rawa! I am not pleased towards thee. I do not wish for thee. Te kemera kai teki. Always was a troublemaker and complainer. He was Heke's uncle. A warrior. And a hard man to fathom. I te tonu he matua kia. Ia te tikanga o tōna ingoa. A kai teke. He rangatira. He maramana koe. I do not consent to thy staying here in this country. If you stay, then perhaps the camera will be judged uh, and condemned, even hanged by the neck. Oh, no, I know I will never say yes to you staying. You English are not kind to us like other foreigners. So go back. Go back, Governor. I will never say yes to you staying. I will not consent to thy staying. Go.